we'll chat about these these Lachancia tart beers a little bit. Yeah. So talk to me, uh, talk to me a, a little bit uh, about uh, how you first got introduced to how you got introduced to that yeast strain and a little bit of yeah. what that yeast strain does. Yeah, um, a, f- a few years ago. So right when St- Saucy started, um, actually the year before, I was writing this kind of paper. Um, looking for a grant uh, to, to start this this study. And what I want, my the goal of the study was to create a world yeast culture. So it was a set of SOPs and a list of uh, accredited or qualified universities or colleges or anywhere that had a lab that we could work with that would enable us to wild forage for bacteria, yeast, whatever microbes are out there, because they're everywhere. They're on your skin, they're on the on fruit, bark, grass, in the air, you name it, it's everywhere. And it's really cool to have a defined set of yeasts that you can buy and you, you know, that are predictable and we know how they're going to work. But I also thought it'd be cool to see what else is out there. How can we do this? I know there's more out there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and at the same time, I think it was the summer of 2016 or 17 that I had went to, I must have been 17, that I'd went to a, an MBAA meeting Master Brewers Association of America's uh, meeting in um, Indianapolis area and went to Upland or Bloomington, Upland. Yeah. And they had a presentation by this, these, these guys, um, Matt Bachman and, and their crew from IUP. And they were basically doing the exact same thing. I was like, oh, and my buddy's like, isn't this like what you were talking about? I was like, actually it is, but these guys are like way farther ahead, yeah. you know? And they had done like a study of a hundred different things that they had found uh, on all sorts of different samples. And they, they grew them all. They isolated what the culture was. They grew it all in individually in 500 milliliter flasks, right? Mm-hmm. And they bought, bless them, they tried every single one because they're like, this is science. We got to know what it tastes like. <laughs> and they're like, well, 90% of them tasted really, really gross. Like, just, <laughs> uh, good. And then, but 10% of those yeast bacteria did actually produce beer out of the wort yeah. that were actually tolerable. And most of it t- kind of tasted Belgian. And I was yeah. looking through his list and I'm like, well, what are, what are these? These are a different strain. These say Lachancia thermotolerance. Like, what, is, what does that mean? And he's like, these three uh, came for, off from an oak tree. I, th- I think it was in his dad's backyard in southwest um, Pennsylvania. And we tried, I forget what the name was, YH-72 and YH-83, I think were his his codes for them. And it was, I was like, have this ever been used to make like a big batch of beer? Because like it tastes, I'm, the, what you're saying, it tastes cool. And he's like, no, nah, it's never made. I'm like, okay, can I get like this much and I'll grow it? And we, so it was the first beer we grew up, the yeast we grew up. Put in the propagator in that 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 prop you saw, like the yeah, first yeah. one that went in there, yeah. and we made this uh, blonde wort, and it just let it sour with just that yeast by itself. So the cool thing about the Lachancia is that it is, it is it is not a contamination. There's not like a it's not it doesn't it's not mixed with any other cultures. There's no bacteria. It's the same size as yeast ish, and uh, it cr- produces lactic acid if it has enough simple sugar yeah. in the wort. If it has dextrose yeah. glucose those things and it directly translates to the acid production we've come to find and so we made this first batch of it and it was cool and we started getting it from these guys and um we transitioned into a different brand once it became kind of more popular that's where the philly sour came along yep. and some other strains apex makes one special sour and that's one of the ones we use um but we kind of learned how to use it over time that it's not a very strong fermenter um you treat it just like a normal wort you oxygenate it regular temperature about 68 fahrenheit and depending on how much gravity you have and how much of that is simple sugar will determine how fast and how much it'll drop that pH down to. And we've only yeah. gotten down to 3.1. But it's lactic yeah. acid only. It's not any of the acetics. It's not muriatic. It's no, none of the other acids. I don't remember if been there. But it's, it's just the one. So it's, it's got this unusual, like, very round sourness. That's not, it's not like one note, like, poke you in the face. It's kind of just sure. this gentle. That's what we started calling it tart. I think I actually had COVID. My wife and I had COVID, and we're like, oh, this sucks. I couldn't. We opened up a Detroit pub, and I couldn't even go up there for that. But I was like, look at this sour. I'm like, how do we like work with this? And I wanted to, I wanted to bring Lachancy to the forefront. So we started. I was like, well, why don't we just call this like a Lachancy a tart because it tastes tart more than sour, and I want people to know what this yeast is because anyone that is in in that kind of know knows Saccharomyces brat, PDO, mm-hmm. lacto, whatever. Why should Lachancy be any different? Let's bring it to the forefront. And in the meantime, we had kind of learned that you need to co-pitch it with a different yeast because it'll outcompete it immediately. You can't you can't repitch that yeast any, anyway. We tried. We, uh, sure. we moved it from two one sour to uh, what was that beer? Mango number five. 
<laughs> and, it, and it no Lou Bega, and it didn't yeah. <laughs> uh, and it didn't it didn't sour it, and we found out that it loses the, it, it 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 is so easily outcompeted, and also it is so fragile that it somehow loses the whatever mutation if whatever mutation happens it loses that souring capacity after the first pitch. Yeah. So we learned that we would let it sour till the pH kind of stopped dropping, and then we co pitch it with whatever kind of yeast we want that beer to become. Mm-hmm. And the next one we're doing is a Belgian. Nice. So, Pretty excited about it's the one of uh, the unconditional love beers for our anniversary. It'll be uh, what's it called? Oh, our, our one of our sales uh, associates, Sam. She has a cat named Newman, and he's this big fluffy gray thing. He's he's cool, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna call this Bonjour Newman, and it'll right, be yeah. a Belgian a Belgian golden with plum, fermented on plum, and then finished on cranberry with Lachancia then uh, Belgian Abbey yeast. Nice, nice. It's be wild. Yeah, man. And, and and I think that's one of the I think that's one of the interesting kind of compelling things uh, about this this Lachancia line is, you know, because if you wanted to be making tart beers in the past, um, you would you know, people people were running kettle sours for a while. And so they would get various strains of lacto into their house. And then they would they would do the the kettle sour thing. Um, I've had some really tasty kettle sours. Um, there's things you need to do. There's things you need to do to to kind of safeguard yourself there. Um, mm-hmm. And there, there's great resources online for that. That's one way. I, I've I've got another buddy that has enough dedicated tank space that he can just uh, he can just pitch. Uh, he has a stainless tank that's really just for his uh, lactic beers. And so he, he'll run lacto fermentations in there and, and blend back different things. But so k- kind of the game changer on, on the chancy is it's, you know, it, it's non bug. It, it's non bug, you know, because that's sometimes people like Yeast. to say, you know, yeah, that's bugs. Right. But there's the, the bugs we're comfortable with, and then the, the the ones that we tend to be a little bit more skittish around, right? And, and lacto ten, tends to be one of those. So it, it it gives us that lactic production without with, with without that concern for your cold side, right? Without so, the concern for the cold side, and like if you're making a kettle sour, you're not cooking that biomass of bacteria that's yeah, grown yeah. into the wart and sometimes i i and um this is not a dig on anyone i mean because the process is difficult um but i I feel like that that mat that biomass that gets cooked is has a flavor to it and i don't love like the flabby kind of like meaty thing that kind of comes through with it yeah yeah yeah. that's that's just and that's just me no and 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 i mean obviously I, i mean obviously that's a that's that's a real thing i mean it's 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 obviously a real possibility because that is exactly what's happening and, and, and actually, I, I hadn't really, and I mean, functionally, I, I, I know that's what's happening because that's how you keep your, that's how you keep your cellar clean at that point, right? Is when you're doing the kettle sour, you know, you get it down to 90 or whatever that particular strain wants to be at. You pitch your lacto. Cover gas it and go. Yep, 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 yep. And then it's dropping pH. And then you're throwing your jackets back on or, or your direct fire back on and you're killing all that. And yeah, so that that's actually one element of it that I've never that that I've never actually considered. That that's actually interesting. And the, um, from a, from a production yeah. standpoint, you just lose your kettle too. I mean, that's you that's that's the other kettle. that's the other thing. You know, and unless, depending unless on what you have like you're a wort holding tank, sure, you lose the kettle. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure. And so, if, if you need to do anything to to really maintain temperature, you know, I, I have some friends that goodness gracious that they're brewing where it's warm enough that they they can keep it mid 90s no problem um but you know i i mean a a lot of us a a lot of us don't aren't in that situation so yeah i I think that is kind of one of the compelling things uh about that and 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 you feel as if that you get a different so let actually let me phrase that as a question do you feel as if you get a different uh acid character out of Lachancia than you do with say um uh, a traditional a traditional lacto strain yeah for sure yeah you do i mean you you get a kind of a, a if you use an lab uh you're getting kind of a range of acids and you're only getting lactic on this one yeah, yeah. And somehow it comes out very there there are obviously other organolectic compounds that are 
that are in play, and I don't know what they are, but it is rounding out the beer in a much different way than you. I think we've all had a kettle sour or two that's just like, damn, that's that thing is acidic. Like, I yeah, it went too far. It's kind of like it gets peeling the enamel, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that can be enjoyable. Like, if it's super hot, like that can be very enjoyable. Um, that's not that's not always what I'm going for, and. I guess I said earlier that I'm not always going for anything, but and these Lachancia beers, the more that we make, we kind of find that the pH stalls at three one to three four, mm-hmm. depending on what you're mm-hmm. doing, and that doesn't really always correlate to the 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 sour feeling in your mouth. Yeah, it can be very low, but yeah. it can also feel kind of round. I think that it more is more of us on these on the range of like titratable acidity. The TA yeah. scale, things of like that. Kind of like when I didn't mention this, kind of like on the white style, where part of that perceived bitterness of a stout is not just the the IBUs, but that that dark roasted tannic, potentially tannic and bitter quality of that really dark malt. Sure. And, and it's kind of the same way that the acid is it hits a little bit different. Yeah. Sort of like that. Yeah. Sort of loosely. No, <laughs> that 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 makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, there, there are kind of some tips and tricks that you you kind of were were uh, hinting at earlier that that kind of help this yeast do do its thing. Um, you know, kind of any anything from you know, are, are there things that you're doing in the mash? Um, kind of starting at uh, up front, or, or well, uh, let's talk. Uh, uh, I can give you, I can give you like um, crib notes on how to use Lachancia. Yeah, talk, <laughs> talk me through it. Yeah, like, I, like, what, what, what are, you, what are you thinking? Like, uh, are there kind of what's the, how long is that checklist? Is it like a three or four, four five point list? Uh, what, what let's thoughts? find out. Let's yeah, find let's out. Go for it. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, one, uh, treat the beer like any other beer. Um, okay. Is in produce wort the normal way and oxygenate it. Knock it out the normal temperature, 68. or Well, not normal temperature, but for this sure. one, 68. But oxygenate it. Do nothing different. Two, uh, underpitch it. Kind of like Hefeweizen, where you would un- – not with a temperature, but with uh, a true underpitch mm-hmm. of maybe half or a little bit less than you would normally think you would pitch. Three, uh, dextrose, cane sugar, any of that simple sugar is your friend yeah. um, to get that pH down because that's – Purely that is purely what the Lachancia is going to metabolize into lactic acid and a little bit of alcohol. It's not a very strong fermenter. Um, for uh, when you you must, <laughs> it's obligatory to pitch a different yeast into this beer to make it a different beer. So whatever wh- whatever you want sour, you start with sour. Okay, it's sour. Cool. What do you want to become after that? Use that yeast. Or if you don't know what's going to happen, go nuts. But have your other yeast ready from either a, like a high Chrysan beer or in a, a pitch quant, some pitchable quantity that you have in a, in a yeast brink or something like that, or cone to cone, or whatever it might be. Don't reoxygenate it, um, but shoot that yeast in, yeast in at a nice healthy rate. Uh, and there might be a day lag because you've used a lot of the oxygen and you're asking that yeast to do a lot. So it's going to stress it out. Um, and it seems that we, we found that most of the yeasts are very tolerant. To, to the acid so that's basically it. those those four or five things that's the hit list on how to use the chance and you're not repitching it yeah yeah i mean that's from 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 everything i looked at i mean yeah that's kind of the that's kind of the hit list right there right um it does need it's it, not it, too hard it, honestly <laughs> yeah i mean it, it does need that simple sugar um and you know when when you know, we we can talk about it through the through the lens of of fruit as well. Do, do you think that uh, fruit tends to pair particularly well uh, with with a beer like this? Well, actually, yeah, uh, yeah people will ask. I, I get this question: um, Can can I make uh, can I like make Berliner Weiss with this yeast? What would be your gut on that? Did you ever? Did you actually drink Berliner when you were in Germany? Just as a uh, not much. No, sure. We weren't by Berlin though. We were we were more in the Bavaria, Munich sure. area. We went up to Nuremberg, and I think we had a couple of. Maybe we might have had one or two, um, but it's not. It's, I mean, the regions are very specific. So sure, nah, sure. We did. I mean, I've had my fair share of Berliners, and I actually have a story about my first Berliner vice I ever made by accident. In a minute, um, I don't know if it could. Maybe, mm-hmm. 
Um, I don't know if it'd be sharp enough to be a Berliner Weiss. I think I think you're on. I think you're in the. I'm in the same page. On the same page. Yeah, you are with that. Yeah. You know, like it, it can kind of get a goes. It can get a goza. Yep. But like Berliner's I agree. a little bit different. I agree. And I think that what Lachancy is better at is what we haven't really discovered about it yet. Because I mean, we're we're just basically figuring out how to use this thing. And I'm trying to get more people to be like, they're called Lachancy tarts. Are you guys cool with that? So. Um, <laughs> Um, but I think what what the best use is we really haven't found yet, quite honestly, because there there's only a handful of people using it, and it's just not well studied or used, and with so few hands touching it, I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential for it. We have found that it interacts really well with fruit. Yeah. Um, almost every one of the ones we've done has had fruit in it, all except for three. Yeah. Um, it just it, it it's it's missing. It's missing something, and it feel it might feel out of place for that style. It's not really a style, sure. but like whatever kind of beer it is, to be sour and not have fruit almost. It mm-hmm. feels like a, a it feels a little weird. One of the better ones we've done that didn't have anything else, and it was with Masthead. We did a collaboration called Drifting Everywhere, <laughs> and it was this 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 huge hazy. I think it had like forty four pounds of hops in the whirlpool, uh-huh. like a twenty barrel batch. I'm like, holy shit! You guys, this is <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, it's pub beer. Cool. <laughs> um, but it, it, it did, it worked. It was mangoey and sour and a little bit, yeah. meh. I, I hate to say papaya cause that's kind of weird, but like it kind of came across that way, but yeah, sure. fruit seems yeah. to work the best with it. I'll be, and I'll be curious to see how Newman turns out with uh, the plum and cranberry, although I'm not giving it a fair shot to what I really want to see is what that beer will do with just Belgium. I think actually the best beer we've ever done that didn't have any fruit was for Carolyn and I's wedding uh, two years ago. We made a beer called Young and Wild, yeah. and um, her last name was, used to be Wild. Her maiden name is Wild, um, and we made this beer that was a La, La Chancia. She came in and brewed with me. It was, it was awesome. I loved it. It was probably the best day at work ever, actually, <laughs> and uh, she, uh, we made this beer um, with La Chancia. We let it finish. I think it went down to like a 3.2 or 3.3 pH, and then we pitched it purely with a, a Britannomyces blend. So you had this like acidic, weird, cool thing that yeah. slowly like actually fermented into more like actually beer, mm-hmm. um, but producing all these like very tropical pine- pineapple, honey, suckle, honeydew, um, kind of peachy notes. And it, it started to get a little bit funky, but the idea was that we weren't going to let it um, uh, hang on the Brett too long. So be sure. young and wild. And also... Yeah. At the time, I think that we would qualify ourselves as young and wild. Just saying. Uh, <laughs> and the project of La Chancia was also pretty young and you know, wild at the time. Sure. Um, but what ended up happening with that beer is our wedding got a little bit moved around because we were supposed to be uh, caught on fire because of the California wildfires that were happening. Oh, and wow. so we only had a couple of weeks to re to re uh, schedule it and replace it, and we moved went down to Sedona, which was awesome, really super awesome. Sure. Um, but that beer got a little bit more time on the Brett. So it turned out like kind of yeah. funky and like sour and it tasted almost like champagne. And I think yeah. I might like rip a, like a mimosa edition of that one sometime soon. Yeah. So definitely. best use I think is TBD yet to come. More people need to play with it. Yeah. That's, that, that's interesting. And you just started playing with it. Yeah. Yeah. So we did, uh, we did, uh, the, we did a key lime, uh, pie beer recently. So you have, I think you might you should have cans of that in in house today. By the yes. way, um, I think Avery ran those uh, those back up today, and awesome. um, so so yeah, I do think it's a I do think it's a it, it's a really friendly way uh, to generate that acid, and I do think it pairs up. I, I do think it pairs up very well with 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 fruit. And you mentioned before. Um, I've ran some some Gosa style beers with it, and I think it's I, I think it's really effective for that. I think if I think if you want that real hard cutting sharp thing, the, the I, I do, at least the way yeah, the way I've like used it in that. the past, yeah, I, I think you need something else for it. But and and you know, I, I think there's also something to 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 what you're doing from from a naming standpoint, where where you're calling these beers tart. I'm pro calling. I'm I'm pro calling <laughs> beers tart. You know, I, I just think sour there's tart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and even sometimes like, and I think you're sometimes you can lose some people too um, with just straight up yeah. sour. I, I I think tart is yeah. I think tart is a more approachable word. 
Um, you're, as far it's as funny the whole thing goes, that's because I just had a beer with a, a good friend of mine, Tom Fox, uh, who was actually on our first, my Carol and I's first date. Yes, different different conversation for a different podcast, for a different uh, video. <laughs> um, but we were, I was like, hey, try this. this actually, I had him try. Um, I had him try Verde. Oh, nice. And this is we label this as a La Chancia Tart Goza with cilantro, tomatillo, lime, and salt. Yeah, yeah. And I had him. I didn't show him the label or anything. I was like, hey, man. Like if this was labeled a margarita sour, would you di- would you get into it? He's like, I don't know, maybe, because it's more for me. It's more tart, tart. Mm-hmm. He's like, but he's like sour immediately turns me off. Yeah, like, I'm like, not that I don't like it or it's not right for the right time, but he's like, just something about it. Like once in a while, it just turns me right off hearing the word sour. I'm like, all right. I think I think there are people, but I I think you just call it a margarita tart beer, or whatever, man. Mar- I I think I think you can definitely move with that. I mean. And you'll yeah. see, and I think you'll see, like with uh, with um, uh, Limelight, the the key lime beer that that I'm I'm I shot shot up to you. Um, I, I think you'll that there's there's like lines that you're playing around, and and it's interesting. Sometimes the we did a uh, we did a, a peach go, so it was probably in 2022. I can't remember. Um, and one of our one of our bartenders uh, at the time bartender slash uh salesperson was tasting and he's like this has like a kind of a margarita feel to it because of like some of the 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 light salinity to it right like mm-hmm. it's not over the top salty but there is like that little bit of like rim of salt on you, you know yeah. what i mean um yeah, I and do. so yeah. i i think I, I think this i think using a yeast like this pairing with fruit and 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 putting it under the margarita umbrella i think there's i I think there's a i I think there's room to run there man absolutely agree agree without the sour part sure and uh i'll i'll take 30 seconds and if you don't mind and i'll tell my the the story of me making my first berliner vice by accident yeah yeah, absolutely so i was getting ready to make a kettle sour i had the like i had this like the aluminum blanket kind of like runner's blanket and some moving blankets to put on top of the kettle had this, the CO2 all figured out, had the whole thing going. and But I, I wasn't there yet. And uh, <laughs> I was brewing at Butcher in the Brewer, and I had just mashed in a Kolsch. Uh-huh. And uh, Cleveland Public Power went down, and we had no juice. And it's just black. It's black. Everyone like, sick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so this is just mashed. And it was like two, like an hour or two went later, went by, and like the reports were like, it's not coming on. I'm like, all right. So I was like, what could I do with this thing? So I kind of like watched it cool. I couldn't move it. I didn't have any pumps. Sure. <laughs> so I couldn't yeah, move yeah. it. I had no power <laughs> to see anything. And I was like, all right. But I had made a beer um, two days before. I think a Kolsch, actually. And I was like, all right. Because I wanted a jacket with, I wanted to blanket it with CO2. Sure. Right? But I didn't want to like hook up just like my CO2 line to it, knowing that, I mean, the alarms could fail or something like that. Sure. It could, could be dangerous to like just fill the place with co2 which is obviously <laughs> dangerous so i hooked up a uh from the blow off line of that kolsch brewing from the day two days before through a keg i put some iodine and some water some iodine four in the water right and then i took the blow off from that uh-huh. which would be the fermenters up through the transfer pipe through the whirlpool up to the top of the, the cip ball of the yeah. kettle. yeah 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 I was like, I'm just going to let this naturally with a blow off, <laughs> blow up so it wouldn't go back into the Kolsch, sure. blow off up into the kettle upstairs. <laughs> and it worked. It worked. Nice. Two days, a day or a day and a half, I think, later, the power made the power came back on. I cooked it and moved it down. And I forget what that beer was called, but it was about three and a half percent. And it was, it was, so nice. was that, it was a, it was, was that, oh, was that beer in the mash tun at the time or was it in the kettle? Mash tun. Mash it's in the mash town, yeah. So the the old mm. sour mash, boy. All right, yeah. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that was tough. That was tough. I tell you, man, it, it's so wild. The, Not ideal. The, <laughs> the the function of the function of oxygen in that situation, right? Yeah. And I I, t- I mean, it just goes. It just goes so bad so fast. Um, you're and, like and, a uh, and all sorts oh, of nasties. man, it's yeah. A- anyways, yeah, that's 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 funny. And by the that's way, the, the, the blow off through the uh, the, the that's <laughs> through, through the iodine. That's I, I thought you appreciate get, that. I, I gotta I gotta spend some time on that. That that's something I wouldn't have. That's something I wouldn't have thought of myself. <laughs> I didn't have any other way to do. It. I didn't know what other way to do. It. <laughs> well, like, I don't want to just shoot CO two in this thing. Like, yeah, God. for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, um, 
so kind of like you know wrapping up on these on these the chancy of fruit beers where i i have kind of this this you know finishing carbonation packaging type area of the discussion uh is there is there anything in particular that you that you think would, would be illuminating uh, as as far as uh th- that part of the conversation for these beers um the, uh, they respond well to extracts they respond well to fruit um, they filter like anything else. And we've, we've, from a QAQC standpoint, um, Zach, our, our Q, QAQC, um, uh, manager, and, uh, I think he just had four years with us. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh, he, he and, uh, Midwest Microbio have developed an assay for our quantitative PCR machine to be able to detect, uh, Lachancia. Um, and we oh, found nice. that it, it, it filters out normally like everything else and also that it's nearly undetectable uh after the first generation so we know from a packaging standpoint it's not carrying over and even if it did carry over to the can or, or, or draft it wouldn't make any difference um it's not like diastaticus or anything like that sure co2 wise i think it's style dependent what you guys are making you know if you're making a goza or whatever you know bring it up but um yeah Wherever acid makes sense, I do think that acid plays better a little bit higher in the two five plus. Mm-hmm. I think Verde is probably two six, tastes yep. like two six, maybe a little bit more than that. Yeah, and that carbonic acid does add to that that lactic acid bite. One hundred percent. Yeah, I agree. Style, style determined, you know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Well, now, man, that that's that's interesting. So, just just kind of big picture. I mean, what are what are some of the things that that you kind of. Uh, I mean, well, I, I'm I'm asking a little bit of a big picture question, but but also a, a little bit of a, a of a practical. So we'll we'll break it up like this, kind of long term. You know, where do you see where do you see uh, saucy going um, beer wise in, in particular, and then and then kind of kind of off of that. You know, what what are some what are some cool fun things that we have coming up? uh for this summer because it's it's finally getting warm yeah absolutely so well i'll answer the summer part first because uh that's very easy <laughs> um summer we're we're kind of doing this like summer of lagers thing nice. and we're bringing back a bunch of hits we're just playing the hits man <laughs> uh, we've got we've got we got a 40 barrel batch of three different uh, lagers uh in the pipes one of them just went in last week separate checks we nice. do a Czech lager called Separate Czechs. Yeah. Love that beer hard. Yeah. Um, that's the summer. We're doing a 40 of Kato, which is a uh, Japanese-style lager. has some rice uh, in it and yeah. uh, sriracha ace in yep. it. And we're doing a remix of a, a beer we did last year for, one of, for our accountant, David, our controller, uh, called A Cruel Summer, yeah. which is named after the Banana Rama song. Okay. Cool summer. <laughs> when so when he did, when he uh, suggested a cruel fall, I looked at him very confused. So he, didn't know, he, he didn't know it was the song. Anyway, um, we got those three. We've got L Lager on. We have Painted Schwartz on. Um, sometimes we have Up the Hill on, nice. which is actually probably my favorite Hellas. The state side. That's um, kind of you. It is. I mean, I've had a lot of them. <laughs> it really is. And um, we have a, a, a Maybach going. It's in the tank right now working called My My My. Nice. Um, Maybach. Um, so we have, I think, six or seven different lagers going. That's coming up this summer. Um, as well, we're working on a, a permanent NA with Brood, the Brewdog collaboration we've got. We had in January. That's right. Looks That's like they're right. going to make it for us. We have some NA coming. We're working on a vodka seltzer line um, this summer. I'm working on the 2024 calendar, which has a little bit more sours in it. Sure. Where I think Saucy's beer will go in the future. Um, right now, as you know, we're digging into water. Yeah. Um, I've been kind of a... Knowing that water has been a big influence on where beer has come from and gone um, stylistically and by region, I have left a lot of our beer to Cleveland's water being just charcoal filtered. And I'm well aware of what salts can do, and I've used them in the past, and we do use them to a small degree at Saucy. But we haven't changed our water a lot, and I think that on beers that we're shooting for certain stylistic targets, we will start to dial those into more of that range. Mm-hmm. But for beers that we're going to create, we're going to look at the water a little bit differently. Sure. Um, we, tend to, we tend to create beers more than brew them. 
um, when it comes to new beers. And nothing against brewing a stylistic uh, Pils, Kolsch, American sure. Stout, sure. Belgian Abbey, whatever it is. Nothing against that. And I we can do that. But I find it more of an artistic expression to take that knowledge we've learned and the skills we've gained from doing these things that have been done and we've ever tried and true and put those things toward a new endeavor and create and push and see what we can get away with, with consumers. To, like, do you like this? Is this cool? Does it taste like you don't like this? Okay, cool. Like whatever it is, you know, but like push that boundary, make mistakes and make, have successes and just keep going. Like, let's not lean on, like, can we, are we going to have RTDs, IPAs and hard tea for like the next 30 years? Like, <laughs> probably yeah. but like what else is coming can we make we can we find a new beverage can we find a new combination yeah. and um for, from the water side uh that will be driven by cleveland's water initially sure sure, sure. so i don't know where saucy beer is going but it's gonna be fun yeah that's awesome and so just kind of uh, just kind of as a uh as a little cap on it where can people be finding saucy beers you can find saucy beers throughout the state of ohio in Giant Eagle, 26 Kroger's, Meyer, lots of um, independent stores and on draft, mostly in the Cleveland area and in Columbus. We are just speckling ourselves down into Cincinnati. So the majority of it, you'll find it in uh, your, your favorite watering holes in Cleveland, Columbus. Awesome. And La Giant Eagle. Awesome. Well, Eric, man, I, I, I want to say, I, I want to say thank you. I, I, I appreciate your time. It's always... I, it's it's always it's always good, and I'm just repeating what I said at the beginning. But it, it, it's it's always good to uh, I don't know have that chance to 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 talk product, to talk beer, man. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're gonna maybe be over here, or over here. Appreciate you watching.